Greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations. I'm Walter Zagarevich. And I'm Nina Zagarevich. And we are joined by our friends and special guests, Evangelist Tony and Marge Abram. And welcome to this broadcast, Tony and Marge. And folks that are joining us, thank you for joining yes. us. Please, <laughs> please share this broadcast with your friends and loved ones. We are not only on Facebook, we are on YouTube, we are on Telegram, we are on LinkedIn, we are also on Rumble and our webpage. If you cannot find us, you're not sure where we're at, just go to Global Vision Ministries dot org that's where we are we try to simulcast on our two groups which one is global vision ministries group the other one is prayer for america group well thank you for joining us and please share if you're on facebook press that little button that says share and it automatically brings this to your profile and your friends loved ones could watch together with us uh, um, welcome tony and marge we greet you today in the precious name of Jesus. And truly, God is so good to us. We have so much to thank him for, to praise him for, to worship him for, and adore him because he is so good to us. We just thank him for his presence with us. He says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And truly, this is the rest and peace of God that we feel, even though there's turmoil around us. There's things happening around us. Circumstances aren't always pleasant, but we know that he is with us. He is in the midst of us as we praise him, as we thank him for all that he means to us. Praise the wonderful name of Jesus. I like the way that uh, Walter and Nina uh, close the broadcast each each time with uh, Jesus Christ, Christ is, is the same, same yesterday, yesterday today, today, and forever. And, forever. and that's why we're here today with them of uh, being able to share the good news and the gospel is not bad news the gospel is good news of course there's a lot of bad news out there because you couldn't have good news unless there was bad news but i'm glad to tell you today that there is good news and in this program today we're going to hear a lot of good things and prayers are going to be made by you, by us, and together we are going to see answer to prayer. All those cancer requests, all those uh, terrible things that are happening, uh, especially in Ukraine and, and across America, Canada, the world, we are going to see something begin to happen because we are going to join together. The Bible says one would put a thousand to flight, two would put 10,000. And look how many of us are joining together. Walter and Nina, we love you. We appreciate what you guys are doing in the kingdom of God. And not only on this program, but especially to the country of Ukraine. God Amen. bless you. Thank you, Tony. We say amen to everything you said there. Um, I just was wanting to read a scripture found in Ephesians chapter 6, and it goes along exactly to what you said with everything that's going on, all the evil. But the Lord gives us um, Ephesians chapter 6, where Paul says, the, put on the whole armor of God. It says in there, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We can't do it on our own. We don't have the strength in our human bodies, but we need to rely and trust God because we need to be strong in him and his mighty power. So he says, put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities in dark places and, and um, against evil spirits in heavenly places. Therefore, he says again, put on 
every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. And I could tell you right now that we are living in the time of evil. We need to be guarded. We need not to let our guard down. We need to be fully clothed in God's armor. It says to stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness for shoes put on peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. And we definitely need to be prepared in these days. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop all the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it's so important for us to speak God's word just as it says, you know, if you're sick, you say, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I have been healed, because that's what it says in the word. You know, if you need provision, you say, God supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Use the sword of the spirit. So it says, pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for believers everywhere. And that's what we believe, that we are going to be persistent. We're not going to let up. We know that God's word is true. It never fails. We're going to stand on his word until that answer comes. Amen. 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 And we are standing on God's word. And uh, I remind ourselves and mm -hmm. you that we should not look at the bigness of our problems or mountains we <clears throat> face, but always look at the bigness of our Amen. God. He is much bigger than any need, any problem, any situation that any of us may be facing <clears throat> right now or have ever faced. And remember, he has defeated the devil. Jesus Christ has defeated mm -hmm. the devil. He has yes. already won Amen. the victory. And we live in that victory. We rejoice in that victory. And we confess the victory. It's not through what we have done. Jesus accomplished it on the cross. Amen. It is by his stripes that we are healed. Or as another passage says, we were healed, past tense, because Jesus <laughs> already paid for it he paid for your salvation my salvation and he paid for our healing he paid for our provision not something we earn we accept it by faith isn't that right brother tony Amen. yes it is and uh i believe that as we follow the lord jesus christ you can't go wrong you can't lose for winning and uh i, I i'm reminded i was looking through some of my uh, old notes here the other day, and uh, I, I came across the, the voices of the Lord Jesus. And I even have a sermon called The Seven Voices of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I remember as a child and uh, that my mother and my father had certain voices, not just one. When my mother was angry, she didn't have to say she was angry. I knew she was angry with me. And if she was happy or if it was supper time, I would know that voice. Well, do you know there are voices from our Savior recorded in the Word of God? And the one I like, maybe I shouldn't say the best, but one I like is called the shepherd's voice. And you know what the shepherd says? Follow me. And remember what Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and that I know them and they follow me. And you know, when we follow Jesus, you know what that means? We're going in the same direction as he is. And then, of course, there's the master's voice and the master. Hallelujah. In Luke 10, 19 and, and 13, he called his 10 servants together and he gave them 10 pounds and said, occupy till I come. Well, the master's voice, hallelujah, is telling us to wait on him that he's coming soon. And when we look at the situation round about us, we know it soon. And then... There is the Savior's voice. And of course, this is the most important. And in it, he says, come unto me. 
in Matthew eleven twenty eight, he he says, uh, if we will come to him, we're to take up his cross daily and follow him. He tells us over in Peter with that Savior's voice, cast your cares upon him. And then he also has the teacher's voice over in Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your soul for my yoke is easy. My burden is light. That teacher's voice, he teaches us how to follow him. He teaches us how to live for him. He teaches us how to overcome. And he teaches us about himself. And then I have a couple more here. The voice of the bridegroom. Do you know that he's coming back for a glorious church? Why? Because he has bought, he has paid in full at Calvary for the church. Do you know he died for you and for me? And he didn't stay in the grave. The third day he did what no one else, he rose from the dead and he sits at the right hand of God. And then there's another voice tone he has. It is the voice of a friend. In Revelations 3.20, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Oh, hallelujah. And if we open, he will come in and he will fellowship with us as a friend. You see, Jesus has called us friends. What a wonderful relationship. You know, if we had some uh, athlete or uh, or someone that's well known, or or the president, or if uh, President Trump uh, or former President Trump was my friend, you know, you would be kind of proud of that. Or well, maybe you wouldn't be, but I I I would anyways. And uh, if someone of authority, you could say, <laughs> it, my friend. But can you imagine to be able to say? Jesus is my friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. And that's a precious tone of voice to hear him say. And then finally, he is, because there's a lot of people in need today, the voice of the physician. Jesus, when he saw them suffering, he would say, will thou be whole? He was a healer then, and he's a healer today. I remember when I was a little boy, and now most people don't know Jack Coe, but he had the world's largest gospel tent back when I was a little boy. And I remember even before I was a Christian, uh, some of my friends and I, we showed up but one thing he, he, he would say is that uh, Jesus, he, he, he had sufficient power to meet every need of your life because he is the great physician. There's not, that Jesus could heal, now I use the expression, that Jesus could heal a headache or a cancer as big as a wash tub. Uh, you know, being an evangelist all these years, uh, you, 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 you copy things from others. Uh, the scripture tells us there's nothing new under the sun. Which, that's what you like to hear and what we, speaks to your own heart. That's right. What speaks to you, you yeah. want to repeat. You know, I, I don't want to say this, uh, but uh, I've even heard Brother Walter repeat some things that I have said. And of course, he started with us working. That's how he began his ministry, I believe. When he came to Bolivia and it translated for us when he was still a teenager. Wow. Yes. And so 
I can say Walter is my friend and Nina is my friend. Yes, and, we appreciate them so much. And uh, friends usually say things what others say and share with each other. Don't you agree with that? Yes. I wanted to share something too, hon. Huh? Well, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nina, just as you shared uh, from Ephesians 6, I thought that's precious because I wanted to read a few verses from Ephesians 4. And that's where God gave the gift ministries to the church. And I just just read a few verses here in verse 8. What does the ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and leaders to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God Amen. and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Yes. And at the beginning of that chapter, Paul t uh, talked about being humble and gentle and patient, bearing with one another in love. And that's what we always need to remember, to bear with one another in love. And God has called all of us, you that are listening today, he's called you to share the gospel too, just as the gift yes. ministry. And I think of the Apostle Paul, he talked about, you know, when he left Corinth, he talked about how he was rejected by some of them there. And But he said, he, di he didn't come back at them and be angry. He said, be gentle. Be humble to all men. And that's what he did. He tried to be uh, humble and gentle to all men and forgiving. And he talks about us being forgiving to one another. And so I, I think how important it is to obey the word of God, Amen. not what someone thinks or what we believe even, but it's what the word of God says in the final analysis. So we need to be uh, obedient to the word of God and listening to the voice of the Lord. And uh, that's what we as God's people need to do to follow him closely, especially as we're entering this period of time where things are difficult, circumstances are difficult for many of you. And and we see trials, we see sickness, illness. We, we see all these things the enemy would put in our pathway, but we are going to follow the Lord and we're going to be obedient to his word and speak his word. As Nina said, we speak the word of the Lord Amen. over us, deliverance, healing and blessing. Amen. And we bless you today that are listening. God richly bless you. Amen. And on this, on this telecast or broadcast, uh, we believe that God wants to save. God wants to heal. And, uh, I know that's the purpose of Walter and Nina Amen. wanting this to go out. We, of course, we want to pray for people. That's their desire. Pray for America and the nations. But we're desi he's de their desire is to see people come to Christ. And that's why I believe that people need to pray uh, for them. Yes. And yes. Uh, I, I, I'd, like, I'd like to just take my liberty and just pray this prayer. And would you agree with me? Father, in the Jesus. name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, we bring Walter yes. and Nina Zagravich and Global Vision yes. before you, Lord. Yes. And Lord, you see Jesus. the needs of their ministry, yes. their Lord. personal needs, the, the things in their lives. And we pray blessing upon yes. them and their ministry, yes. upon them yes. and their family, yes. upon their children, their children's children. And Lord, you see the efforts that have been made for Ukraine. Yes. And Lord, speak yes. to hearts. Yes. Lord, to get behind them and behind yes. their ministry so they can even do more. And Lord, we, we see they are working with people that we know that have stayed on the front lines. Uh, not only the front lines of war, but the front lines of evangelism. And Lord, supply every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So we bless Walter and Nina and this ministry, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you too. Amen. Thank you, Tony and Marge.
Thank you, Tony and Marjorie. Really appreciate everything that you've done to um, help us help those in need because you've been a big part of what we do. And we'd like to thank everybody else who's given financially, who's prayed for us because the people in Ukraine are so very thankful. They say that we could not have fed all these people without the funds that come through your ministry. So again, I'd like to thank everybody. Not only do we feed people, we evacuate people, we get medicines to people, we encourage people. Um, so um, we just want to know that your financial support does a lot. It goes further, just the, like multiplying the loaves of um, bread and fishes. The little that we get, God spreads it out in a great way. So we thank you, all of you, for that. Amen. And literally tens of thousands of people have been evacuated uh, from the war zones mm -hmm. and uh, especially from the Donbass region, which is Kharkiv and Luhansk. And right now there's just a, a stream of refugees fleeing her, occupied her son as Ukraine begins their counterattack mm -hmm. against uh, the Russian forces occupying uh, particularly the area of her son. But also uh, this is affecting other surrounding regions. And so there's a flow of refugees coming out of her son and the occupied uh, region of uh, Zaporizhia into the city of Zaporizhia. We're supporting and helping Bishop Vasily as he's greeting and feeding these uh, 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 people mm -hmm. that are streaming in and then they're trying to help them either to go on further or uh, to find a place to stay there in the city of Zaporizhia. And this uh, has been going on and on. It's just a, a, a daily process. And it's an arduous uh, pr um, uh, process to get out of those occupied areas. You don't just walk out. Uh, it takes days. Sometimes the Russians will not allow them to leave. They have many checkpoints. Uh, they'll check people, especially the, any men uh, that are in the group uh, for any sign that they're um, patriotic to Ukraine. And uh, sometimes they'll separate out the men from the women and children. It's a very difficult process. And right now in Kherson, we ask you for, uh, for prayer because there are some right. uh, things that have uh, developed there. Uh, the uh, Bible Society has a uh, Ukrainian Bible Society has what they call the House of the Bible in the city of Kherson. And this House of the Bible is basically the place where Bibles are sold and uh, it is uh, distributed uh, also from here uh, for that entire southern region. And uh, also pastors meetings and uh, different types of uh, activity christian activity is held in this bible house that they call as they call it well it, the russian forces came and just took it over and went and settled inside this bible house very difficult and um, mm. so they're they're trying to see if they could get them to return it um, they had someone in the position of authority over that region that was not um, uh, uh, was not against churches now that change that person who's in charge is against uh, evangelical and protestant churches mm -hmm. and um, uh, there's one rocket that fell on a church in one of the towns in Kherson in Chikai Lovo it's called and what happened is that the church was on fire this was a couple of days ago um, in the in the very center of the city uh, um, a, a church that we I'm not even sure I should mention the name but a very important key church that is in the central part of the city a church we worked with for a number of years a church we helped in the very beginning uh, 30 years ago that church is uh, um, uh, has been notified they're going to take away their facility um, just they're like just, just like that and so we're praying that that does not happen uh, this is a church that uh, uh, has about 2,000 people and many daughter churches. So please, please pray for her son, uh, Bishop Sasha, whom we've talked about, is in a very difficult situation. Being a head of the Ukrainian Bible Society, being a bishop over churches in that occupied area. And his son was held previously for several months um, as a prisoner. He was released. Um, but right now the situation is very tense in her son. And so 
so please pray. This is in the southern area of Ukraine, the first area in the uh, mainland of Ukraine when you come in from Crimea. And so it's a very strategic area uh, for various reasons. And one of them also is because that's where there's a huge water reservoir and the water that flows into many areas there in the south goes through there. Uh, so please pray for Herson. Please continue to pray for other regions like Kharkiv. They continue to be bombed. Uh, uh, the Donetsk region, we had Bishop uh, Anatoly on yesterday. If you missed that interview, go back and watch it. And he shared how that our help is, is has been so crucial to the a humanitarian relief effort. Sometimes they had uh, no fuel to get these uh, people evacuated, no fuel to go and buy supplies. They've been without uh, drinking water in that city now for months. And it's not just that city, most of Donetsk region. And so they have to buy water, haul it in from someplace else. It's uh, um, They're without gas and electricity comes on and off. Uh, but <clears throat> he wasn't complaining. He was here rejoicing over what God is doing. His church, he was left with about 20 members of his church. He said now it's 27 because seven of them return. Now, uh, but in his church, he on Sunday, they had like 300 people this Sunday. The whole bottom of the church, the balcony was full. The foyer was uh, had people in it. And this is, this is a church where, as I just said, his original congregation, only 20-some people remain. But these are all new people. And he says, yes, some of them um, uh, come because they're going to get uh, some food help. But he says they only give out in the church about 70. They distribute a lot more than that. But because they feed many people between 150 and 300 every day day refugees that are being displaced they feed in the church and they help them register them help them to get on an evacuation train uh, which is the only place you could get out right now from that Donetsk region right in their town that train station was once bombed uh, but thankfully it's still operational so they get these people to special wagons that take evacuate evacuees out of the area so it's a whole process they go they pick up people from war zones um, they, they some people they have to use uh, ambulances uh, that they have as a church to go and pick up people that cannot walk people that are immobile uh, people that um, are handicapped people that are elderly and just don't have a lot of mobility they literally sometimes carry them i think you've seen our postings in the past but this type of work is continuing to happen they bring them to the church they feed them a warm meal they'll offer them a shower some of them have not bathed in in weeks actually over a month sometimes two three uh, months now because or wash their clothes, wash their clothes. so uh, they try to help them with their immediate needs and get them on a train out of that area um, but um, their their church is got some of these refugees they've got people that have resettled in their town they also have local people that before were not too interested in church now they're very interested in church so he said if they give out 70 packets of food and yet you've got 300 people in church you know that 230 people are there not because they're going to get a packet of food they're there because they want to hear the gospel of jesus christ they want to hear hope they want to hear hope and he says people come up to him and they say thank you thank you it's, it's just we have such a, a sense of well-being after being in a service here we sense something different we sense a certain peace we get hope again because there are many many hopeless people now in Ukraine. Some people that uh, uh, have just lost hope in life because day in and day out there's bombings. It, it, just, it just keeps grinding on. And when they see believers that still have a smile, believers that still have hope it just impacts people and they say wow um, you know there's something different about you and they share with them the hope that there is in Jesus Christ and let me tell you many are turning to Jesus Christ it's thousands and churches are packed all over Ukraine and um, 
Bishop Anatolius, I interviewed him yesterday. He was in Romania. They asked him to come into Romania and start some churches there with the Ukrainian refugees. And yesterday, before the interview, he had three services that day because they could only fit about 200 people in the church. So they would get about 200 in. Uh, they'd minister to them, give them help, and, and, and feed them, give them some food supplies. Then they'd let those out and bring another couple hundred people in. And this went on with three sessions of uh, with some 200 and some people in each one. Um, and but but God is working amongst the refugees. They're being saved also. And I'm believing for not tens or hundreds, Brother Tony. I'm believing for millions uh, uh, to come into the kingdom of God. Um, Brother Tony, I know that you and Marge were there in the 90s when uh, uh, when you've seen the, 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 the people streaming to God, uh, receiving Jesus. Well, it, it's, it's kind it's of some, it's happening again um, in, in different circumstances. You've got a war that's raging right now, but the response is uh, similar to what you saw there in the 90s. Yes, it was uh, fantastic everywhere we went uh every crusade every church planning um i remember one experience where we were dedicating a building that we had purchased in a village and uh uh that day it was snowing just slightly and uh the the building was packed i when i say like sardines i mean there was no room it was crowded around the front and uh, you were translating and and uh I, I or I or maybe it wasn't you, but anyways, we were squeezed up toward towards the uh, the back. My my back was against the wall. It was so crowded. And when I gave the invitation, uh, about three quarters or more that had come in for the dedication uh, wanted to be saved. And uh, and but then I heard a moan, and I turned to the the pastor that was going to pastor this flock, uh, she said that, uh, she said, those are people outside that couldn't get in and they're crying outside because they think they can't be saved. Well, I remember squeezing through the crowd and coming out on the, the stoop, the little, uh, as you come into the, the building that had been converted into a church. And here was, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred people and uh, most of them were crying. And I says, listen, you can be saved out here and outside. And uh, and I, I led him in the sinner's prayer outside under and the snow's falling. And here they are wanting to be saved. I mean, that's how it was pretty well everywhere. And uh, then, of course, like with every great revival, there come a slowing down but it was also a time of establishing churches and, and so forth. But now we see it even greater because people are desperate. And uh, the, the, what I'm hearing is so many are being saved. And this is, this is the hand of God. And I believe, you remember all the schools of ministry that you had, Walter, and uh, I had the privilege of, teaching and a lot of them on evangelism, I would say between you and I, we, in the former Soviet Union, we trained over 5,000 workers in evangelism. And uh, they're scattered, a lot of them are scattered all over Europe and different parts. And what are they doing? They're doing evangelism. It's a time of revival. And I believe it's a time of revival for Europe. And listen, Europe is going to be facing perhaps uh, the coldest winter they've ever had because they're going to have fuel, fuel sure. and, and shortage of uh, fuel because of what's happening doing from this war uh, in Poland and Germany. They're cutting down trees, getting wood ready. And in England, uh, they're, they're, they said 70% of all the uh, restaurants are going to have to close because of lack of food, of fuel. And so it's, if there was ever a time to get ready and be saved, that's what the people are doing. And I believe 
they can change it. The thing can be changed as revival comes across all of Europe because Europe needs the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we saw the hunger of God, didn't we? They were so hungry for the gospel. Yes. When we taught in the schools, we saw their hunger for God. Just j grasping every word almost that we would share with them. There, and uh, on evangelism as you taught and as we taught in different subjects, yes. we, uh, Brother Walter and Sister Nina, we want to say how much we appreciate them. Because they're not just talking about one city in Ukraine. They're talking about all the cities yes. that they're helping in, assisting in. And so we appreciate them, Brother Walter and Sister Nina, speaking the language so fluently. They, they're they able to keep hands on all these, these things. Walter that are, Nina. Yeah, Walter and Nina. Yes. And they are able to keep their hands on everything that's happening. Yes. So. You know, we appreciate them. And I know that you that are listening, you appreciate them also so very much because of what they are doing, the compassion they have. And they're imparting this compassion to all of us that we can help. We yes. can assist. Well, it's just like this. We thank God for the Americans, the English, the, the Canadians uh, that are doing work and ministry. But most of them, they don't know the language. No. Walter and Nina... They know the language. They can communicate. They have a closeness yes. to the people right off the bat yes. because they can really communicate. I don't know if you guys have considered that, but it's true. It's a gift, a very it's great a gift, gift to be able to And they're to able to really minister to the people in their own language. Yes. It's certainly better to be able to talk to someone in your same language then have to go through an interpreter, and I know that. I talk simply in my Ukrainian, but uh, I can converse, and I can even lead a person to Christ, but I can't communicate like Walter and Nina because they were raised with the language so much. Well, we we spoke in mixed language, English and Ukrainian, or my parents did. But anyway, thank God for, for the languages that he has given. And those of you that are listening, you are communicating in your own languages to people. And thank God for the ministry that he has given as we talked about the gift ministries and those that are sharing the gospel in their own language with their own testimony. No one can refute your testimony. You are giving your life story of Amen. what God has done. And oh, the miracles and the testimonies that we all can share. Amen. Bless you. So we bless you, Walter. Well, uh, let's 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 pray for Ukraine right now, and they need our prayers. Yeah, they need our support, but they need our prayers. And every time we speak with them, one of the first things out of their mouth is, "Thank you that you have not forgotten us. Thank you that you are praying for us. Thank you that you are concerned for us." And uh, uh, more than the finances, the prayers is what they appreciate. They need the finances, they need the food, the supplies, but our prayers are the most important thing that they need. And so let's stop and pray right now. Heavenly Father, we yes, pray Jesus. for Bishop Anatoly who was on the program yes. yesterday. Bishop. Father, we pray for the work yes. in the Donetsk region. Mm -hmm. We pray for those believers that remain in Donetsk and uh, in the Luhansk regions now occupied. Lord, we pray for those who are in the occupied areas of Zaporizhia and Kherson and Mikhailov. Yes. And Father, we send yes. your word to those uh, pastors and leaders who are working in those occupied areas. Strengthen them, O oh God. Infuse them with your power, with your anointing, with your wisdom. O oh God, protect their lives, protect their families, protect their homes. And Lord God, protect their uh, church facilities. God, we pray that uh, those facilities that may have been taken over or occupied by Russian forces will be returned 
to the people, uh, to the churches, oh God, in the name of Jesus, in that building in the Donetsk region that was taken over uh, by uh, the, the Russian forces and they put up a communist flag and a big picture of Lenin. Lord God, we pray now against that spirit of atheism and communism and the slavery that once enslaved the people again in this region and we say no to them we say no to those demonic spirits that are trying to enslave the people of ukraine and we release the spirit of salvation the spirit of healing the spirit of deliverance upon this nation and the spirit of blessing may your blessing come upon the nation of ukraine father we pray for the pastors we pray for the frontline workers yes, the volunteers uh, like pastors are gay from yes, Bultava, um, uh, the pastor uh, in, in Zaporizhia and other area who are risking their lives going into war zones helping people rescuing people feeding the poor helping those that are in need that cannot help themselves protect them oh god may yes, your angel wings cover them from yes, above Lord and Jesus. beneath from the left and the right the front and the rear oh god we pray that you would create a cocoon of protection yes, around Lord them Jesus. as they travel as they are in those war zones as they return from those war yes, zones Lord and Jesus. we pray oh god that you would strengthen them and protect them and give them health oh god and every provision for this work to go on in the name of jesus christ amen and amen amen uh, brother tony and sister march there are people you had mentioned about the voices the voice of god and i believe the holy spirit is speaking to hearts right now there are those that may not be in a war zone and there may be someone who is who is listening right now and maybe you've lost hope maybe you think there's no hope for you maybe you think you've got you're too far gone and god cannot even save you that is a lie of the devil if you are listening to this broadcast and you uh, are hearing these words let me tell you that jesus christ loves you and the power of the blood of jesus christ has not changed and that power mm -hmm. is available to you to cleanse you from every sin and to make you a brand new person just as if you had never ever sinned before only the blood of jesus christ can do that and he's already paid that price and so i'm going to ask brother tony to further um, talk about this and invite you uh, to a personal relationship with jesus christ brother tony has led thousands of people in mass evangelistic crusades all over the world i've witnessed these i've translated for him in some of these and i know that god wants to save you brother tony Thank you, Walter. Uh, yes, I love pointing people to the cross. I love pointing people to the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I believe that God is speaking to hearts there. You don't have to be in the Ukraine, although there may be those that are uh, crying out from the Ukraine right now watching or if they have the ability to watch this. And uh, But there are people that need the Lord. I know there's many sick among you, but there is a sickness far greater than, than any cancer, uh, any uh, disease, a COVID disease, uh, or, or a pandemic uh, uh, problems in your life and in your family. Uh, you may be suffering with that, but that's bad, but it's even worse if you don't know Jesus. And today, you can come to him, to the foot of the cross. You say, what do I, the master's calling you? He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He wants to be your friend. And that, to do that, you need to invite him in. He wants to have fellowship with you. Yes, he wants to write your name in the book of life. And today is your day. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. And now, the accepted time. You say, what do I have to do? Well, you need to repent. You need to re say, Lord, 
I, I, I want to change in my life. I, I, I'm sorry for my sins. I want to be able to uh, live for you. And, and to begin that, let us lead you in a pair of a prayer of repentance, a prayer of receiving Christ as your personal savior. And he will wash away your sins. He will write your name in the book of life. Are you ready? It's so simple. The gospel, the, the, the plan of salvation is simple. God doesn't want anyone to miss it. You can lay your hand on your heart, would be good. And pray this prayer. Marge will repeat it after me and to help you. And close your eyes. Realize that Christ wants to come into your life and say this. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I come to you. I come to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the Christ. name of Jesus Christ. I open my heart. I open my heart. I open the door to my spirit. I open the door to my spirit. And I ask you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord. To forgive my sins. To forgive my sins. To write my name. To write my name. In your book of life. In your book of life. Lord, at this moment. Lord, at this moment. This very moment, this, I ask you to come in. This very moment, I ask you to come in. And be my personal Savior. And be my personal Savior. Let your blood wash me of all my sins. Let your blood wash me of all my sins. I believe right now. I believe right now that Jesus Christ. That Jesus Christ died for me. Died for me. Rose again. Rose again. Sits at the right hand of God. Sits at the right hand of God. Making intercession. Making intercession. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You paid the price for me. You paid the price for me. You gave your life. You gave your life. That I might live. That I might live. And I receive. And I receive. As my own personal Savior. As my own personal Savior. I receive. I receive your forgiveness. Your forgiveness. And Lord, and Lord, with your help, with your help, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to live for you from this moment on. From this moment on, I'm going to serve you. I'm going to serve you. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Give me the strength. Give me the strength and the knowledge and the knowledge to follow you. To follow you. I confess. I confess with my mouth. With my mouth. I believe with my heart. I believe with my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you pray that prayer, I got good news for you, Jesus has written your name in his book of life and no one but him could ever blot it out and today is your first day of really being alive because you've received christ now do three things to grow in the knowledge of god to grow in the blessing of god and that is Talk to God every day. Talk to him like a friend because he is a friend. He's a friend of sinners. He's, of course, a friend of believers. And you believe now, don't you? So talk to him like a friend. Second, let God talk to you. When you read the Bible, when you read, especially the Gospel of St. John, it'll help you a lot. And then the New Testament really is the perfect will of God for your life. And then third, share your share the gospel with others. Share the gospel with your family. Will you say what gospel that you gave your heart and life to Jesus? And try to get be a part of a Bible believing church and God will help you. And then Brother Walter, I'd like to pray for the sick too. Uh, please, uh, please. There, there are many of you that have received Christ. You also are probably 
Some of you are sick in body. I want to say that God is a healer. We have been getting a lot of prayer requests, and I'm surprised how many with cancer. It seems to be an increase for some reason. I mean, from, from men with cancer of uh, the prostate to people with cancer of the brain. Marge just lost yesterday morning early, lost her uh, first cousin, like a sister to her, uh, with cancer of the brain. And, uh, uh, but the family gathered there just before she passed, went on to be with the Lord. I got word from yesterday that a dear brother, friend, evangelist, uh, Hank Denary, he uh, worked with us in the past, uh, back in the 60s, and again in the 70s, uh, over in Asia, Pakistan, India. Sierra. Europe, of course, all over Europe, back in the 60s. And, 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 and he is so weak, and he may be seeing Jesus very soon. And, uh, so, but God can restore him, yes. and he can restore you, because by his stripes, as you heard Walter say at the beginning, uh, you, uh, um, we, are, we are healed, but they're in the prep, it's already paid for. By his stripes, we were healed in First Peter 2.24. Uh, you, there's healing for you. And so as we pray the prayer of faith, I ask you to lay your hand where you suffer. Or if you've got a baby that, that's sick, or a, a, a loved one, you, or, or, or there's someone else in, that's, uh, there's no distance in prayer. And so as a point of contact, lay your hand on your heart and pray for that one that you're praying for. Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, yes. we bring all these mm -hmm. that are suffering. Lord, there are, like March has a number in her family that need healing. There's our friends that need healing, but also God, that there are people in the church of the living God, our brothers and sisters in Christ, that are looking to you right now. Some of them have today received you as their personal savior and they're sick in body. They've got some problem. Lord, it don't matter whether it's a cancer or a headache, a migraine headache. Lord, it could be a inward condition, an outward condition. Lord, no matter what it is, we speak the word. We send the word of healing, for by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes we were healed. He himself took our sickness and infirmities, and he took them to the cross. And we ask, Lord, that you heal the baby, that you heal the children, that you heal the women, that you heal the men, that you heal the young that you heal the old, uh, and Lord, uh, touch each one that's looking to you. In the name of Jesus, let your healing power heal that heart, strengthen that heart, uh, that one with congestive heart failure. Lord, restore those with that AFib. Uh, I ask you to heal, Lord, those who have, Lord, uh, arthritis throughout their body. Uh, you see that one with the shoulder condition? Uh, heal, Lord, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, you see those with depression, those that are suffering uh, attacks of the enemy, that epilepsy, that sugar, uh, diabetes, Lord, uh, oh God, uh, that will oh, heal those kidneys uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, cursed be that cancer uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, let, oh God, uh, that cancer die in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, uh, we curse the life of those diseases. Uh, Restore those organs, uh, restore that mind. Uh, you see that one with the memory loss, uh, those with Alzheimer's, Lord, in Jesus' name. We speak the word. Uh, 
Lord, you see, we're praying one for another. Lord, we're reaching out uh, to loved ones. We're reaching out uh, uh, to friends. Uh, we're reaching out to the body of Christ, uh, the church of the living God. And Lord, I think of those again in Ukraine uh, who have no doctors to go to. Uh, Lord, uh, they they are spending suffering uh, from wounds, uh, from uh, from uh, fragments of uh, of bombs. Lord, uh, we ask that you heal in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I sense in my spirit. Uh, that you are healing people right now. And Walter, if there's anyone that I've missed uh, that you want to continue, I could name and name lots of names, but Lord knows each and every one of them. And Father, we thank you that you are healing right now. We thank you that there is no distance in prayer and you are touching people in America, in Canada, in Mexico, in Cuba, in China, in Russia, in Ukraine, in Germany, in Romania, in Poland. In the name of Jesus, we send your word right there to that individual in, uh, in Poland right now, that person in Germany who needs a touch of God. Be healed in Jesus' name right now. Receive in Jesus' name yes, Jesus. and begin to put your faith in action. God is working. Thank God is Jesus. touching. Release your faith by trying to do what you could not yes, do. Jesus. Write us and let us know what God has done in your life. Uh, we want to pray now for America. Um, and and uh, as we pray for America, pray for your nation yes. and believe for God's transformative power to affect the course of your yes, nation. Lord. So Father, we come to you today acknowledging your greatness. We are humbled by your love for us and that you came to give us life and life more abundantly. We can come to you in full confidence and ask anything according to your will yes. that you hear us. And whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of you, Lord. So America needs your divine rescue from destruction. We are praying and we are believing that you, Lord, will have mercy on the United States of America and the plans of the enemy will be thwarted and that your plans for hope and a future will prevail. May the spirit of repentance blow throughout our land, bringing a mighty revival, Lord. Judge the evil, Lord, but empower your remnant to move in your power to change the course of this nation. May the revival that starts here affect the nations around the world. With you, God, all things are possible. Father, may truth and justice be established once again. We bind the spirit of deception that has permeated the airwaves. We release the Holy Spirit into the atmosphere to block and to destroy every deceptive lie of the enemy. We thank you in advance for your divine intervention to bring the hearts of people back to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for shaking the foundations of evil and exposing the enemy's plans. Thank you, Lord, that the unborn have protection. May it be established in all of our states in the May of America. Father, thank you that you're raising up politicians and parents and teachers and families that acknowledge that we need you, Lord, to save this nation. May the church rise up and boldly proclaim that there are consequences to sin, and that is death, Lord. May the church be a beacon of hope, proclaiming the good news that there is a Savior who heals, delivers, and saves, and his name is Jesus. Lord, we ask that you replace those in leadership positions in this country making unwise decisions. Father, may they be removed and replaced with another who hearts align with your will, Lord. Father, continue to use us and others to stand in the gap for America's return back to you, Lord. So we decree America shall be saved in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's continue praying for America, yes. for Canada, yes. for your nation, whether it be Cuba or Mexico, Argentina, or Brazil, Germany or the United Kingdom, 
Let's believe God for his intervention. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tony and March, Thank for you. joining us. It is always a joy to have you on here, sharing from your wisdom, sharing from so much experience. And thank you, folks, for joining us today on Prayer for America and the Nations. And if you would like to have uh, you want to participate in our humanitarian relief efforts ongoing in Ukraine, please do so right now. The needs are now. Go to our webpage, globalvisionministries.org, press the donate button and give right now. Designate Ukraine. 100% of what you give for Ukraine goes to Ukraine. If you would rather do it by check, you can do that by writing to Global Vision Ministries. P.O. Box 5377, El Dorado Hills, California, 95762. Thank you again. Thank you, Tony and Marge. And folks, remember, Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the same, same yesterday, yesterday, today, today and, and forever. forever.